Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and this is module number 6. Uh, we are talking about uh, sodium ion rechargeable cell. Uh, this is lecture 28 where I will be describing the electrolytes, their role and requirements for sodium ion batteries. Uh, mostly organic electrolytes are used like lithium ion batteries then ionic liquid electrolyte and also polymer electrolyte. So, uh, first uh, I will describe the general characteristics of the electrolyte including the salt and solvent that is used. The conductivity of the electrolyte at what range that is desired, what is the stability window that is fixed by the used anode and cathode material and the homo lumo band of the electrolyte in between. Then what kind of electrolyte additives are used basically to expedite the film formation or um, due to uh, I mean to impart the flame retardants. And then ionic liquids um, whatever so far have been tried for sodium ion batteries and then what is the status of the polymer electrolytes. So, as you know under ideal condition electrolyte is electronically insulate um, the negative and positive electrodes and act as a medium for solely uh, for the passage of uh, ion charge transfer by electron pass through the external circuit. So, same thing whatever we talked about for lithium ion batteries. The requirement characteristics of the sodium ion battery it is some kind of recapitulation already what you know uh, when I talked about it for lithium ion batteries. First one is chemical inertness uh, electrolyte of course, should stay inert. Uh, all inactive and active battery components like separator you should not react with the binder that you are using it should not dissolve the binder current collector you should not attack uh, packaging material you know by this time that uh, we need to hermetically uh, seal the battery in uh, having different types of uh, form factors. So, it should not react with that wider liquidus range and thermal stability it should not get solidified the solidus line and liquidus line and the mixed uh, um, electrolyte uh, eutectic formation that uh, already uh, we talked about while I was discussing for lithium ion batteries. So, similar things are valid also here low melting and high boiling point temperatures extend the operative range as you know uh, for lithium ion batteries as well as for sodium ion batteries. High ionic and uh, no electronic conductivity already we talked about it. Wide electrochemical stability window uh, that is important. So, that the uh, anode should not uh, get uh, the reduced product uh, precipitate on it or uh, electrolyte should not oxidize. Uh, to affect the uh, positive electrode material. Uh, tunable interface properties that means, uh, formation of a stable electronically insulating, but ionically high conductive interface layers on both the electrodes particularly the negative electrodes and positive electrode even if it forms uh, it should not get uh, dissolved and come back to the electrolyte itself. It should be environmentally benign and non toxic uh, needless to say that and uh, this should have a sustainable chemi chemistry beyond I mean based on the abundant chemical. So, you should not uh, use a very expensive or uh, uh, obscured kind of uh, or the process should be relatively simplified you mix it and prepare it for your own purpose um, and it should be of course, be scalable. So, um, here also we will use uh, non aqueous electrolyte uh, because you know both lithium and sodium they are uh, very prone to um, attack uh, by this uh, moisture content. So, the solvent should be polar with a high dielectric constant uh, you know the E C D M C we talked about it. 
uh, it should exhibit low viscosity uh, to improve the ionic mobility. Then um, remain inert uh, particularly to the charge surface of the cathode uh, and the anode during cell operation. So, then they, the structure is stabilized and uh, destabilized uh, right uh, that when the charging is taking place then sodium is taking out from the crystal lattice and uh, there are a lot of phase transition can take place depending on what type of positive electrode that you are using. Uh, so, it should remain inert, it should not attack the electrode materials and it should have a wide uh, liquid range um, that is a low melting point and high boiling point. So, that is very important because we will have to use the battery in different kinds of environment. So, um, maybe hot summer days in Rajasthan 46 degrees Celsius or very cold chill day in the Himalayan area if the batteries are used. So, that it should remain uh, liquid uh, of course, in the low temperature. Uh, the most widely used solvents they are basically same what I described earlier cyclic type propylene carbonate and ethylene carbonate or linear type ethyl methyl carbonate EMC or dimethyl carbonate or diethyl carbonate. So, DEC and DMC. Most sodium ion electrolytes employ one or more sodium salts dissolved in a mixture of two or more solvents. So, uh, two types of sodium salt some of the reports uh, I have found, but uh, it should be a mixture of the solvent. Solvent should be of the mixed type because we talked about the electro uh, eutectic point and uh, elaborately discussed it uh, during while I was discussing the lithium ion battery cases. So, most widely used salts are uh, sodium perchlorate and sodium PF6 or NaCF3SO3 or NaTFSI they are used and uh, other salts are relatively less report because this technology is not yet well uh, ripened. So, this is uh, a standard characteristics. Uh, so, for reference it is very important to you and these are the solvent and co-solvents uh, all are tabulated here with their chemical structure and melting point you can see boiling point, freezing point, viscosity uh, at room temperature of course and the dielectric constant. So, that uh, will help you to mix uh, these uh, solvents uh, together and uh, this is very important. This uh, organic solvents particularly the cyclic and linear type of solvent use it along with uh, the sodium ion salt that is very important to get a stable electrolyte. The salt properties also uh, I have tabulated here different types of salt that you can see whatever I just mentioned with their anion chemical structure and more importantly what is the conductivity um, that you can get. Uh, so, this conductivity of uh, 1 molar of salt uh, at uh, different uh, uh, fraction of uh, this uh, solvents uh, that is uh, given and whether uh, they uh, have any corrosive effect, corrosive effect on the current collector, the metal if they attack that is also important to be considered and anodic stability at what voltage up to what voltage it is stable that is also important you should not get oxidized. So, this oxygen gas will evolve and that will attack the electrolyte and there will be thermal runout. So, you know that. So, that is uh, to be avoided. So, accordingly judiciously we will have to select the salt, but um, as I said in case of lithium ion battery uh, this uh, 1 molar of LiPF6 in ECDMC or ECDEC. Uh, same thing uh, here for sodium ion battery uh, either sodium NaPF6 or sodium perchlorate in uh, ECDMC or the cyclic and uh, linear type of solvent whatever I have mentioned here. So, not much choice 
not much choice people uh, only follow uh, this kind of typical com composition. Now, the conductivity if you see this is quite interesting if you take a PC based electrolyte with uh, one molar of various sodium salt here the black part this black part is the conductivity. So, the conductivity remains like this if you take NATFSI of course, it is having a relatively lower conductivity in millisimen per centimeter and uh, sodium perchlorate is uh, uh, relatively better, but you can see NAPF 6 is uh, um, about 8 uh, millisimen per centimeter and the viscosity this viscosity uh, is given uh, in the same um, histogram. So, the viscosity should not be increased much that will uh, reduce this thing uh, the, the mobility of the sodium ion. So, uh, similar kind of conductivities for different salts uh, more or less similar kind of conductivity uh, that indicates that anion does not remarkably influence the conductivity values. But uh, if you uh, see the mixture of the solvent, uh, then you have a clear cut trend. So, you see DME and compare with, uh, with DMC. So, here DMC you can see conductivity is very low, uh, sorry this is the viscosity part, conductivity is also very low. And then uh, you go progressively with uh, EC DME which is the maximum one here and viscosity also reasonably low and EC DMC also it is there with a reasonably high uh, conductivity. So, you do not have much choice in this. Uh, to select the salt and the solvent uh, combination and the true two uh, controlling factors are uh, one is the viscosity should be low enough and second one is the conductivity should be reasonably high. So, proper selection of the solvent can enhance the electrolyte conductivity by increasing the dissociation of the salt. So, high dielectric constant is important or lowering the viscosity of the solution to improve the mobility. So, I think that you now understand the role of this salt and solvent in controlling the viscosity and electronic um, ionic conductivity of the electrolyte. Now, the stability window is important the electrochemical stability window that indicates that anion choice does not influence the stability except for TFSI anions which react with aluminum about 3.4 volts. So, if you study this it is a actually 1 molar sodium perchlorate that is dissolved in various solvents. So, the solvents are here this is given and this part is the electrochemical window. So, uh, uh, it has a wide electrochemical window uh, sodium perchlorate in EC, EC and PC polycarbonate, uh, but this is having a very low uh, kind of electrochemical window and this yellow part is the thermal stability. So, you should have a, a good thermal stability and wide electrochemical uh, window. So, the PC based electrolyte is uh, giving a good characteristic. So, this has been compared uh, with uh, various types of uh, sodium perchlorate salt and uh, this is plotted with the electrochemical window. So, as you can see that this one is good, this two are good, it is slightly less NATFSI PC that is having a very shorter window. So, the selection of solvent have a major influence for the electrochemical stability window as well. Earlier we saw the electronic conductivity and viscosity also is more or less controlled by the solvent and the highest stability is obtained with PC DEC then triglyme mixture of EC DMC or EC and PC. So, highest thermal stability window is observed for PC and uh, EC is to PC. So, these are good guideline for you to select that what kind of solvent, what kind of salt that we will use not only to control the 
ionic conductivity and viscosity, but also the electrochemical window, uh, the voltage range that uh, basically the homo lumo band, the voltage range that uh, you can operate it with and also the thermal stability of this electrolyte solution. Some case you add uh, the functional additives to the electrolyte and that is to improve the bulk properties of the electrolyte and accompanying electrochemical process. This also was introduced for lithium ion cells. So, there is a film forming additive uh, as you can see that F E C is the best one. Uh, so, without F E C the, the form uh, this is the current collector, this is your uh, negative electrode and this one is your uh, unstable uh, kind of ACI that forms. So, you should not expose this electrode further. So, you, you should have a stable and uniform ACI. So, this molecule serve as a sacrificial components for the formation of a high regu regulated interface in the initial activation cycles of the battery. You remember that when you construct a cell then forming cycles are important where you basically grow the SEI layer. You know the reversible capacity, you know the irreversible capacity and then accordingly you construct the cell, you design your cell in that way. So, they should have very high reduction potential than the solvent uh, or polymer or sodium salt. So, they are they get preferentially reduced. Fluoroethylene carbonate that is FEC, this is the most useful uh, one and it has been used for SIB as well as in LIB also. And this has been proved to be effective for this SCI film formation on the surface of sodium metal and also hard carbon electrode and even the conversion type of anode SNO2 or alloy type of uh, material SNSB, uh, red phosphorus. Uh, so, this is a quite good and effective electrolyte additives that one can think of. Then for sodium ion battery, uh, um, since the melting point is quite low uh, for sodium metal case, uh, flame retardant additives, uh, they are very useful. So, conventional organic carbonate solvents that they basically generate a large amount of hydrogen radical uh, particularly at high temperature that uh, reacts with oxygen and produce uh, this oxygen free radicals. At the same time the generated hydrogen radicals continue to trigger this reaction and that produces more free radicals. So, this trimethyl phosphate TM P or triphenyl phosphate, triethyl phosphate, tributyl phosphate, dimethyl, methyl phosphophonate DMMP. These are extensively used for the flame retardant additives in LIB and they can also be used in case of uh, uh, your sodium ion batteries. So, this additives acts as a radical inhibitors. So, they basically capture the radicals uh, H and OH types in the flame zone and weaken the uh, terminate uh, either they weaken it or terminate this combustion chain branching reactions. So, they are indeed very effective. So, this paper is uh, quite good one. So, this fellow Feng uh, used about 5 percent of ethoxy pentafluoro cyclotriphosphazine which is abbreviated as EFPN and prepare a non flammable 1 molar sodium PF6 that is the salt in ECDMC 1 is to 1 electrolyte. So, as you can see that with this PFN this, um, this is not flammable as compared to bare EFPN um, kind of additives. So, I would like you to go through this uh, uh, journal paper to know more about this um, additives. Ionic liquids you know that at room temperature they are molten salts 
that is formed by combination of large organic cations imidazolium is one of them pyrolidium pyrolidinium and uh, high charge delocalized anions like tfsi and or fsi or bf4 so same like lithium ion battery and this is the structure of cation and anion and they have low vapor pressure a broad liquid state temperature window high chemical as well as thermal stability and uh, wide chemical electrochemical voltage window they are non flammable but the problem uh, similar to uh, the ionic liquid that we use for lithium ion battery is its viscosity and relatively uh, lower ionic conductivity so that remains uh, a major problem so this sodium bis fluoro sulfonyl imide which is abbreviated as nafsi uh, small fraction 0.1 mole fraction in n methyl n pyrolidin and bis fluoro sulfonyl imide which is abbreviated as pyr13 fsi 0.6 mole fraction and n methyl n pyrolidin bis trifluoro methyl sulfonyl imide this is pyr13 tfsi and 5 weight percent of ec so these uh, are the popular ionic based liquid which people have tried and you have studied with sodium ion battery so among the ionic liquids this composition this pyr13 fsi that is uh, known to have a relatively low melting point and viscosity and uh, this tfsi best has wide uh, electrochemical stability window and high thermal stability so uh, sometimes ec also is add, added in this ionic liquid as additive uh, to basically enable the formation of a stable protective layer aci on reactive anode surface when uh, used in com combination with uh, fsi types of anion and this is some um, results taken from uh, the literature report and uh, this uh, coulombic efficiency sodiation and desodiation they are quite impressive and uh, uh, this is used with a uh, hard carbon electrode uh, and a combination of uh, ionic uh, liquid base electrolyte and uh, ec as a additive and the rate performance is also quite good so uh, people are studying this ionic liquid uh, mainly because that when you will uh, go for the high voltage sodium ion uh, positive electrode then certainly uh, to uh, retard the electrolyte oxidation because of this high voltage then ionic liquid is the only answer polymer electrolyte uh, people have started uh, using it mainly uh, there are two types one is the gel polymer electrolyte and another one is a solvent free solid polymer electrolyte exactly the same th what we described in case of lithium ion battery so this gel polymer electrolyte that actually exhibits a weaker mechanical properties but flexibility is quite good uh, it has good electrode electrolyte contact and processing is quite simpler so but mechanical property is uh, a bit weak uh, but conductivity is higher because you are using the uh, organic solvent also and solid polymer electrolyte that is on the other hand mechanically stronger uh, you can prepare it in the free standing film as well uh, as a membrane so they have relative advantages and disadvantages so in case of gel polymer electrolyte this is formed by incorporating a liquid electrolyte solution which is sodium salt dissolved in a cyclic and linear types of solvent into a polymer matrix so pbdf is taken as that polymer matrix so that is used as a gel polymer matrix due to its high electrochemical stability then addition of uh, this uh, hfp unit that is uh, hexafluoropropylene uh, crystallinity of pbdf could be reduced um, and the semi crystalline pbdf hfp exhibits a higher flexibility as compared to the sole pbdf 
ionic conductivity this electrolyte uh, is about uh, 2 to 4 into 10 raise to minus 3 Siemens per centimeter is not that aggressive um, because uh, had it been uh, in minus 2 range it would have been better. Transference number is about 0.3 I hope that you know what is transference number. Addition of ceramic particles sometimes uh, or some kind of plasticizer that could further increase the transference number, but large amount of ceramic fillers would eventually degrade the mechanical properties of the gel polymer electrolytes. So, this room temperature ionic conductivity we compare along with the transference number of this gel polymer electrolyte. There are several gel polymer electrolytes that people have studied and uh, you can see here the conductivity range is not improved much and there is not uh, anything available which is having a dramatic uh, change in the order of magnitude. Uh, so, still uh, further research is required to understand it and uh, uh, gel polymer electrolyte which will be particularly useful for flexible kind of sodium ion cell uh, which is not part of this uh, course anyway, but that is also an interesting area of research where you can have a uh, not a stiff battery, but a flexible battery which you can wrap it, you can uh, make a fiber kind of thing. So, that is a very, very interesting uh, area which is emerging in uh, last decade. So, that also is quite useful. So, solid polymer, polymer electrolyte, uh, this is solvent free solid polymer electrolyte, sodium salts are dissolved in the polymer chains. The sodium ions could transport in the polymer host by a segmental motion, segmental motion uh, within the polymer chain. So, polymer chain relaxation takes place. Therefore, they strongly dependent on the amount of mobile charge carrier and also temperature is involved. In my non-metallic uh, material course, uh, I have uh, a detailed description about the basic polymer structure. So, uh, if it is, um, I am sure that it is available. So, I would like you to just go through those 5 lectures in module 1 of my non-metallic material courses. So, that the segmental motion or the type of the polymer structure that will be clear to you. So, conductivity in this case you see it is quite low 10 raise to minus 9, 9 to 10 raise to minus 6 at room temperature and uh, increase with temperature. So, if you go above 80 degrees Celsius, it just increases. So, still uh, uh, it is a long way to go and um, uh, to control this uh, polymer uh, um, hanging segmental motion uh, and how to control this uh, mobile cation through this. Uh, so, that, that part needs to be uh, better engineered before you can use this polymer electrolyte in sodium ion battery. So, this is not in a stage of uh, commercialization anyway, but even as a part of a research uh, first we will have to reduce uh, the uh, conductivity substantially because 10 raise to minus 3 and 10 raise to minus 6 at room temperature is a huge huge difference. So, the amorphous phase of the polymeric host um, that also improves the conductivity. So, uh, we should have a semi crystalline polymer and we should have the control on the amorphous phase in the polymer to improve its uh, ionic conductivity, sodium ion conductivity. So, this solid polymer electrolyte, uh, there are a lot of research that is going on. You can see here the conductivity versus temperature plots, temperature is increasing in this way and this is a number of uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, polymer based electrolyte. So, out of that this PEO polyethylene oxide, this is a polymer uh, which is a popular choice mainly due to its good electrochemical stability and other mechanical properties and uh, it can solvate various types of metal salts. Appropriate anions that is FSI or TFSI in the sodium salts would facilitate 
the sodium ion conduction in P o as basically this anion could interact with the P o chain effectively reducing their crystallinity and P o and increase their number of free sodium ion for proper movement. The less free anions due to interaction of this polymer chain could basically enhance the cation is to sodium um, cation I mean the sodium ion transference number. So, polymer blends uh, that is PVP or plasticizer that is uh, succinyl nitrile and inorganic cer ceramic filler uh, which is TiO2 sometimes they have used or silicon dioxide even barium titanate is also used that basically found to improve the ionic conductivity in the PEO base that is the I mean mostly studied polymer based electrolyte and basically all this addition they what they do is to reduce the crystallinity of the polymeric PEO. So, uh, this is your study material, um, uh, this is um, a quite good uh, uh, description you will find uh, in these two particular uh, publications uh, and uh, this also is a uh, good uh, review article that uh, one should uh, go through. So, in this particular lecture we talked about general characteristics of the electrolyte uh, mainly their salt and different solvents including cyclic and the linear one. Electrolyte conductivity and viscosity interrelation with the solvent and the salt that we talked about. Then electrolyte stability window also uh, with solvent and electrolyte uh, the salt in the electrolyte that was uh, talked about. The actual role of FEC as a film forming agent or several flame retardant additives um, in, in the electrolyte that was introduced. Ionic liquid work is uh, coming up for sodium ion battery as well, but they are not yet well established. And gel polymer electrolyte uh, some uh, work has been done and solid polymer electrolyte that will be uh, very much needed for flexible battery for energy storage. Uh, so, the latest uh, things I have uh, described. Thank you for your attention.